I the a-hole for blowing up at my wife for going to her gender reveal appointment without me? My wife and I are expecting our first baby together. We made an appointment to find out the gender of the baby. To me, this is very important. I had hopes for a boy. But unfortunately, the day of the doctor's appointment, I had to attend my friend's birthday that I remembered last minute. I asked my wife if we could cancel the appointment and go another day, but she looked shocked that I even considered canceling the appointment and going to my friend's birthday, but I said I had no choice. She said canceling the doctor's appointment was off the table because these appointments are restricted to specific time and date, and we can't miss it, so she'll go alone. I told her no, because that'd be selfish of her, and besides, this will ruin the news of finding out if the baby is a boy or a girl. She cut the discussion and told me to go to the birthday party. I did, then later found out she didn't cancel the appointment and went with her mom instead. I came home seething and blew up at her. I started arguing with her about going behind my back and doing this without me. She said it wasn't her fault I prioritized a party over my child. I told her I didn't prioritize anything. She literally could have cancelled and we would have gone another day. But clearly she was trying to steer the fight to a direction where I looked like the neglectful and irresponsible one. We fought some, then she said I'm probably angry with her because it's a girl. But I responded that she was wrong. She went outside the room claiming I was stressing her out. Now acts like I owe her an apology on top of everything else. But I feel upset and like I was deceived by her. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments before the little update. You ask your wife to reschedule the gender reveal appointment because you wanted to go to a birthday party? Your wife gives a valid reason for not rescheduling. And you called her selfish because you wanted to go to a birthday party. You told your wife she couldn't go to the appointment without you because you wanted to go to a birthday party. How dense do you have to be to not realize the moment you ask her to reschedule the appointment that you were prioritizing the party over the appointment? I feel bad for your wife. You're the a-hole. Makes you wonder how old he is that he can't miss someone's birthday party. Anyone over the age of 16 would understand if you gave them a quick call that explained the situation about why you won't be able to make it. He's literally over here like, I had no choice. I had to go to the birthday party. WTF. You're the a-hole. To me, this is very important. I had hopes for a boy. But unfortunately, the day of the doctor's appointment, I had to attend my friend's birthday that I remembered last minute. If I was your wife, I'd be pissed too that you decided to go to a birthday party that wasn't even important enough to remember about until the last minute. You're the a-hole. Your priorities are wildly skewed. Appointments should take priority to the party you remembered last minute. You had a choice and you made a wrong one. Your wife is 100% justified in being pissed at you and you were the neglectful and irresponsible one. Will you miss the birth because some random thing you just remembered came up? Will you get pissed at your wife because she couldn't hold it in? I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it did. Opie will come back in a few months with, Am I the a-haul because my wife couldn't hold the baby in for a day while I went to celebrate my friend's birthday a couple of hours away? It's so selfish of her to not prioritize my needs over her. Parties don't happen every day. Babies do, though. Info. First off, Jesus. I swear I came here thinking I was somewhat justified in my frustration. But I was wrong, it seems. Although, I just want to point out that I did not just go to the party without telling my wife and having a discussion with her first. Also, the friend lives two hours away, so I had to leave at two when the appointment was at four. I did not know she went, but I would have appreciated it if she at least was upfront with me about what she did. She could have said she was going anyway, but instead told me to go to the party and had me thinking she was going to cancel and reschedule. That it? For those who are speculating on the type of parent I am slash will be, you really don't know enough to make those assumptions, so I'd appreciate it if you just focus on a conflict I just presented. Next story is titled Am I the a-hole for suggesting my ex's daughter stop coming over for a while after she purposely messed up my relationships? I-35 female used to date a guy we'll call Jacob, 37 male. We dated for 9 months before we mutually agreed to break up. Jacob has a 16-year-old daughter we'll call Emma. Emma's mom is not in her life, and apparently all previous exes treated her horribly. Emma calls me mom. I never had an issue with it even after the breakup since I knew she didn't really have one and I cared for her. 
Emma often comes to visit me and stays over her. About two months ago, I went on a date. Emma found out but acted really excited for me and even insisted on helping me pick out a dress. We had a blast and even went to for some ice cream after. The date went well, and I thought things were going good. However, about a week later, I received a text from my date calling me a horrible person and telling me to never talk to him again. This happened for the next three days and went on, and at this point, I knew something was up. On the fourth date, the same thing happened as the previous three dates. However, this time I decided to ask for an explanation. He then sent me screenshots of messages he had received from a random number claiming that I had a family and that I was cheating. I was shocked to see that the number which sent messages was Emma's. Emma came over later that day, and I showed her the screenshots and asked if she sent this to all my previous dates. She admitted to sending this message to all my dates and apologized, saying that she thought that if I got in a relationship, she would lose me. I felt bad and told her that she would never lose me and I would always be there for her. We had a heart-to-heart, -heart and then got sushi and I thought this was the end of it. I went on another date last week. I had told my date about Emma and everything that happened with her. He thought it was funny and had no problem with her being in my life still. Well, a day later he sent me a message, and what do you know? Emma had messaged him the exact same messages she sent to everyone else. I called Emma and asked why she did this again, when we had already talked about it and told her that if this doesn't stop, she will not be able to come over to my house for a while which is something I don't want to do. She got mad and started swearing at me before saying that I should get back with her father because we didn't end on bad terms before hanging up on me. I called her father and explained the situation. I told him that I think we need to get her a therapist as I think our breakup affected her more than we thought. I then told him that until the situation was resolved and she apologized, she shouldn't come over to my house for a while. I would still talk to her, just not see her for until she starts therapy. Well, her father was furious. He called me everything in the book and said that while she was in the wrong and should see a therapist, I was an a-hole for essentially cutting her out of my life because of it. I explained that it was only temporarily until the situation was resolved. However, he hung up. It's been a day and I feel really bad as I'm the only healthy mother figure she's had. However, I don't think I am a wrong as it's only until she starts therapy. So, am I the a-hole? Edit. People are asking how she got those numbers. I used to always give her my phone even after the incidents because I never had any reason to doubt her and I thought the issue was resolved, so she most likely got it from there. I also have every intention of still talking to her, just not seeing her until she starts therapy. Added too, someone suggested that maybe the reason previous exes didn't like her is because she did something like this. So I asked some mutual friends, and apparently she has a habit of getting attached to women very quickly and calling them mom. Apparently it made all the exes uncomfortable, and a lot of them broke up with Jacob because of it. Not stay home. She does need therapy and this is not healthy. If you don't put some boundaries, she is going to keep doing the same over and over. This was very odd to me, to be honest. We dated for nine months before we mutually agreed to break up. I consider Emma my daughter. She calls me mom even after the breakup. You dated only nine months and she started calling you mom? That seems like way too fast for someone who was just dating less than a year and did not even live in the same house. It'd be more understandable if she was age 1 to 4 and didn't know better. But a teenager attaching themselves to an adult after a few months is really bizarre. It never sounded like it was a healthy relationship to start with. I can't remember the actual term, but I remember an SVU there being an episode with a kid who would get overly attached super quick. I wonder if it could be happening here. Not day home. You need to cut contact completely though. This is not normal behavior on her or her father's part. You dated nine months, not nine years. Well, I feel for Emma needing a motherly figure that isn't and shouldn't be you, especially since you were with her father such a short amount of time. But the fact he thinks you're wrong and called you all the names is also the problem. I get you care for Emma. But this isn't a we need to situation. It's a he needs to. Because Emma isn't getting the message and your ex is enabling her. I upvoted this because I wonder if Opie has ever considered how crazy it is to be called mom by a 16-year-old nine months in. Opie should do whatever she feels right. 
Propi, please understand if you continue that your relationship with this child is a commitment. If you are not in for the long haul, you need to take a step back and cut contact. Also, yes, not having her in your home isn't the right move if you aren't cutting contact. Therapy should have been on the table from the very beginning. Next story. Am I the a-hole for limiting financial support to my daughter, 23 female, upon finding out she wants to live child-free? I have two children, a son, 26 male, who was recently married and plans to have children, and a daughter, 23 female, who is still studying. Before she told me she plans to live child-free, I offered to help her financially in buying a car, as I did with my son a couple years earlier. However, now that I know she doesn't plan to have children, I feel like the money will be much better spent helping my son with buying an apartment, which he plans to in some time. My reasoning is that the humble wealth I have accumulated over the years thanks to my hard work, I only could do because of my parents' financial contribution to my education, etc. So I would like to pass to future generations to help them going into life as well. I feel like supporting my daughter anywhere beyond the level of living a decent life would be a waste, because she won't pass it forward like my parents did to me. On the other hand, supporting my son would mean increasing life quality for his family and his children, allowing the wealth to flow down to generations and improve my grandchildren's future. My daughter, however, is very unhappy with my decision, because she obviously would want a car, she says I promised, which I did, but under different circumstances. She says it's unfair because my son doesn't have children yet as well, but it's not really important because he plans to have them. It is actually looking to buy an apartment for the family. I just don't want to indulge my daughter's wishes to get a car, when my son will clearly need the money more to make his family's life better. I, however, agree that it would mean Akita would be breaking a promise. So would I be an a-hole to refuse to pay her for her car? You're the a-hole. You're trying to coerce your daughter's reproductive decisions. Stop it. If the consequence of her being truthful to you about how she feels about her future is that you will cut her off financially if you don't like what she wants for her future, she will be 100% justified in just stopping sharing with you her feelings about things. You're setting yourself up to ruin your relationship with your daughter. And if she ever does have children, for her to keep them away from you because she doesn't want them around a manipulative, disrespectful a-hole. You want the wealth to flow down to future generations, yet fail to see that your daughter is the definition of a future generation. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. You made a promise and broke it for selfish reasons. Is your daughter only useful for the grandchildren you can get out of her? You sound awful. Opie, this is the message you're sending, that you value your daughter only for her ability to reproduce. If you ever expect her support in your old age or just when you go through painful moments in your life, you might want to reconsider, though it's likely too late. As it is, you've made a very cold and alienating decision that's going to come back and bite you later. If you kept your promise to help with the car and simply, and quietly, you're marked more of your money towards any grandkids in the future. That's one thing. Reneging on your promise and saying it's because your daughter plans to be child-free is manipulative and a prick move. You're the a-hole. Well, you could spend your money like you want. It's still an a-hole move to cut down financial support because she doesn't want to pop out kids. This is a highly personal choice. She doesn't owe you to get children. And you're being petty basically telling her she's worth less now because she doesn't want to have kids. You're a terrible parent. And honestly, maybe being child-free would have been the better choice for you. You're playing favorites because she lives a different kind of life. So much to your parental and conditional love. Edit. I just want to make it clear that in no way am I trying to manipulate her reproductive decisions. I respect her decision, but I'm not doing this as a way to force her to have children. At no point have I suggested I'd reconsider if she got children against her decision. All I'm doing is reconsidering what amount of support will she need with no children to support, as compared to my son who will need to support the family. Now for the last story. Would I be the a-hole if I told my mom that my brother spends her money on his girlfriend? I'll try to make this short. About two years ago, my parents lost all their money to extremely expensive medical care. My dad never recovered and he's become bedridden. Due to this, my mom had to go back to work to make money for the both of them. I help them with the bills, but I don't make enough money to provide them with a comfortable life. My mom's job helps, but they're still struggling. 
My brother, 23 male, graduated college a year ago and is struggling to find a job. My mom had to borrow a large sum of money from her brother to pay for his college. It now sends him monthly payments for rent, bills, food, etc. The thing is, my brother isn't making any efforts to find a job and seems comfortable living with the money my mom sends him. He always says that he's trying his best to find a job, but I know he isn't, and that is going through some tough times. It really needs my mom's help until he can find a job. He never mentions paying her back. My mom is 63 and is struggling in her job. I recently found out that he was dating someone. I was scrolling on Instagram and found her account a suggestion. I saw a couple of posts where she's bragging about all the expensive gifts her boyfriend, my brother, buys for her. I was very angry. He's clearly not struggling if he can't afford all this stuff for her. It was bad enough that he was making my 63-year-old mom send him her hard-earned money to help him until he can find a job. But to know that he doesn't even need it and is using it to buy gifts and go to expensive restaurants is outrageous. I thought I'd tell mom, but I don't want to be an a-hole, so I'm still thinking about what to do. So would I be the a-hole? Not the a-hole. It sounds like he is taking advantage of your mom. It's horrible of him to expect the mom to fund his lifestyle. This could be considered financial abuse too, although admittedly I'm no expert. You would not be the a-hole. It is outrageous that he is doing that and that he is not putting more effort on finding a job. Not the a-hole all the way. Screw that. He's being a leech. He is a grown man now and can fend for himself or bring his dates back to mommy's basement. If Opie wanted to be really petty, they could fill the girlfriend in on where her expensive gifts are really coming from. And if she leaves, then the gifts are now non-issue, and brother gets a good shaming for his awful choices. Probably should just talk to the mom and be the bigger person, but it's fun to think about and not stay home.